Hi everyone, I'm back again. Nancy, you did an amazing job telling us all about seasonal cicadas. I love the colors of the cicadas down where you live. They're so pretty. I'm also excited for cicadas because this year Brood 10 will be emerging near where I live. So hopefully I'll be able to show you guys some of the Brood 10 cicadas eventually. That'll be super exciting. But yeah, I loved everything you had to tell us about the seasonal cicadas. Super cool video. Definitely another five stars for you. Turf Wars, a battle of wits, knowledge, and creativity. Which naturalist will prove they're the best? Choose your fighter and watch the action unfold on Turf Wars! Okay, now it's time for me to answer your challenge, Nancy, and I should have anticipated that as soon as the weather was nice by me, you would give me a challenge centered around insects. Now, I'm not exactly the antithesis of an entomologist, but I don't know nearly as much about insects as you do, so I'm gonna try my best. And I thought today it would be really fun for me to try to complete your challenge just by walking around my neighborhood. Nancy, you've challenged me to talk talk about ants, which is actually pretty okay because as far as insects go, I think ants are pretty cool. Uh, but as you mentioned in your video, there are lots and lots and lots of species of ants and I don't know how to identify any of them to species. So I'm just going to give you some general ant facts that I happen to know. Uh, first off, ants are part of the order Hymenoptera, so that includes other insects like bees and wasps and the ants. And ants Ants are highly social organisms. They have a really strict hierarchy of social classes within any particular ant colony, and that earns them the designation eusocial, a fancy word that just means truly social. I actually recently spoke to an expert on ants and eusocial organisms, Dr. Greg Pask, and that video is up here if you'd like to check it out. We talked all about superorganisms and the implications of being eusocial. Just like other members of Order Hymenop, ants are holometabolous, which means they go through complete metamorphosis. So basically when a queen ant lays an egg, it becomes a larva or a little squishy thing that then has to go through a complete transformation in order to turn into an adult ant. So basically the babies look nothing like the adults and have to go through a complete transformation in order to become an adult or to turn into their adult form. The Larval ants are taken care of by worker ants, who are usually their older sisters, and protected by soldier ants, who are also usually their older sisters, and the queen is the mother to the entire colony. The reason I decided to make this video while walking around my neighborhood is because ants are a group of insects that actually do really well in anthropogenic spaces, or urban and suburban spaces that are created and managed by humans. Those leafcutter ants you showed us are really cool, and a lot of people might think that they're very exotic because we usually only see leafcutter ants in documentaries that are filmed in tropical locations. But here's some cool footage I took of leafcutter ants in Austin, Texas. Texas. That's right. In the city of Austin, we found this group of leafcutter ants just doing their thing, cutting leaves and running the pieces back and forth to their colony. So ants do really well in spaces that might be partially or all covered in concrete and lawns and other very human-centric things. For instance, many ant colonies are completely happy to sort of excavate a nest hole in between two pieces of concrete sidewalk. There's soft dirt down below the concrete slabs, and I imagine the concrete helps protect them from predators and even from like flooding the nest when it rains. So there are lots and lots of little ant nests in between the slabs of concrete in the sidewalks around my neighborhood, but I have no idea what species of ants these are because I am not an entomologist and I don't know how to identify ants. Also, ants are really tiny, hard to identify. Most species of ants are incredibly territorial, so you wouldn't normally find two nests very close to one another. I'm going to assume that this nest hole and this nest hole are just two different entrances for the same colony because I can't really imagine them tolerating one another being quite so close, even if they're different species. Ants normally don't like to live this close together. Okay, I do feel like I might know what these ones are though. This is an incredibly large black ant compared to a lot of our other ants, which are very teeny tiny. 
Um, and this is also, it's right next to a big tree. You can see the roots right there. Oh gosh, now I've lost the ant. Oh no, it ran away. Um, but anyway, I think that was a carpenter ant. Uh, yeah, but it's gone now. Oh well. <laughs> oh wait, no, there it is. Ah, carpenter ant. Da -da -da -da. I know one species of ant. That's good enough, right? Although we've both shown examples of ants that are eating leaves or, well, more accurately, carrying leaves back to their nest so that they can farm a fungus that they will then eat, some ants eat different things. And some ants are important pollinators because they go into flowers to collect nectar rewards to eat, and then they get pollen stuck to themselves and then go to a new flower and deposit the pollen so the flowers can make seeds. For instance, here are the leaves and stems of some peonies that are coming up in my garden and later this summer the peony flower heads will be absolutely covered in ants who are pollinating the peonies. This is a very intense ant colony. Look at this, they've like perturbed all of the soil here and there are many, many entrance and exit holes that they're going in and out of. This is a very industrious colony of larger ants. Okay, Nancy, well, I hope I've satisfied the ante of the challenge that you set for me. So now it's time for me to turn it back around and give you a new challenge. Spring is in full swing here in Chicagoland, which is awesome. And I am seeing the first results of the springtime activities of a lot of our animal friends in the area. Another animal that really thrives in human dominated landscapes is the Canada goose seen here. Uh, they're native birds. They're kind of big. They can be kind of grumpy, so I'm going to keep my distance. Um, but there are lots and lots and lots of Canada geese here in the Chicagoland region, and they have all been busy making nests and laying eggs to make babies this spring. And of course, because the animals always seem to know when I'm coming with my camera, even though I saw a family of Canada geese with their goslings in one of the neighborhood ponds yesterday, today I have walked to all three ponds and have seen zero goslings. Uh, so here's a little bit of footage I got of some ducklings, some mallard ducklings running away through the undergrowth with their parents because the animals know when you want to film them and, and they leave. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully you will have better luck than me because I would like you to show me some animal babies or some animal families. Also, I was so frustrated that I forgot to say what I was going to say and the thing that had motivated me to showcase the Canada geese as uh, springtime parents in the first place. And it is that Canada geese are actually like really extra good parents. So not only do they take very good care of their own goslings, but if any goslings, baby geese are orphaned or separated from their family for some reason, Canada geese parents will usually just adopt those extra goslings. And so sometimes you'll see like 14, 15, 20 goslings swimming behind a pair of parents, which I just think is so cute. But you know, I couldn't show you goslings because the animals are just too smart for me apparently. Just kidding, I just had to whine enough. Here they are. Look at them. They're so very fluffy. But yeah, they'll go in the water almost immediately after they hatch and are ready to go. And the parents do a great job of keeping an eye out and watching them. But you know, it looks like they're just sort of taking a drink in the shade. They might be eating a little bit of like algae or duckweed, but it looks like they're mostly just drinking. There you go, goslings. Look at that. I was able to show you some baby animals after all. It's a happy ending to my very tired and hot walking around the neighborhood story. <laughs> So that's my challenge for you, Nancy, and anybody playing along at home. I'd like you to show me some animal babies, or at least an animal family, if the babies have already grown up a bit. And I'm going to challenge you to make them not insect babies, because I know that's just too tempting for you. Find me something that's not an insect. It can be a different kind of invertebrate if you happen to find a different invertebrate family or invertebrate babies, but no bugs this time. Let's make it something different. Uh, don't forget that you can tag Nancy and myself in your social media posts if you do happen to play along at home and complete our challenges and I'm excited to see what you all find. I'll see you in the next Turf Wars video. Bye!